his wonders to perform. Can I hear a witness in the house? I said, God is here. His wonders to perform. Amen. You're welcome to church this morning. Can you welcome your neighbor? Say, neighbor, you're welcome in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for such a privilege to be in your presence. We thank you for the wonders of your love. We thank you for your grace that you have released upon us this morning. Thank you. Lord, when us look up to you this afternoon, reach out to everyone. Amen. In blessing, Amen. in healing, Amen. in deliverance, Amen. and in victory. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit, we ask that you have the preeminence. Glorify Jesus this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I don't know what we're going to do with our time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Mark chapter 5. We have so much to cover this morning. Amen. Mark chapter 5. I'll just quickly run through verse 1 to 20 and then uh, do a bit of teaching before we pray. It says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. See, but when they saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For Jesus has said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, Jesus asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of sheep feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirit went out and entered into the swine. And they had run violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000, and they were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled, and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus, and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had an had legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their course. And when he was come to the chief, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. How bit Jesus suffered him not but said unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and had had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how many great things Jesus has done for him and all men did marvel. Hallelujah. The devil is a very bad devil. 
Amen. Very, very bad. He has no mercy. This morning, I strongly believe that we're hard for a time of deliverance. God is going to set somebody free. Chains are going to be broken. And there will be restoration. You had quite a sang it. Amen. Chains are going to be broken. And there will be restoration. Now, this is a story we are very, very, very familiar with. Amen. The, the madman of Gadara. Praise the Lord. There are a couple of things I just want us to, I, I want to point out to us. Amen. So sensitize us even as we look up to God and pray about this man. The man has no name. Praise the Lord. Jesus asked him, what is your name? And the demon didn't allow him to answer. Because the demon had already taken possession of him. Amen. They ran his life. So they answered for him. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. They ran his life. And so they answered for him. He said, we are legion. And a legion, you know, is how many? A battalion. There's 1,000 soldiers. Roman soldier. Amen. 1,000 demon. Amen. Living in one man. Hallelujah. So, we are, going to call, we are going to call his name Legion. Because that's his name, he told us. Praise the Lord. <laughs> that may not be his, his real name, but he told his name was Legion. Amen. Now, there are a couple of things we want to look at about this man, the madman of Gadaran. The one was the fact that the man was bound in shame. Praise the Lord. He was bound in shame. Amen. And that symbolizes a demonic enslavement. So sometimes when people have dreams and they see chains, it does not mean that one is physically bound. It means that well, there are forces behind, amen, that are restricting, that are putting one, that are restricting one's freedom and liberty in life. Hallelujah. So the first thing we notice is that this man, because he was tormented, because he had so much demon on his inside, like it, it still happened in the world today. Amen. Anybody who, is, who has mental illness, they put them in shame. Praise the Lord. They are restricted. It's demonic enslavement. So the man was under what? Under an attack of the enemy. But I pray this morning that every attack of the enemy over your life will be broken yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Psalm 107 verse 14 says, the old man Christian standard Bible says, he brought them out of darkness and gloom. And he broke their chains apart. So it does not matter what shade is holding you down. This morning, there's liberty. The chains will be broken in the name of Jesus. The next Bible says, he brought them out of utter darkness. And he tore off their shackles. Every shackle will be torn off this morning. In Luke chapter 13, verse 16. Jesus saw a woman in the, in, in the, in the sanctuary. The Bible said the woman was bowed down. Amen. And there were forces who were contending with the woman saying, even after Jesus healed the woman, the people were not happy. So there are some people who are, who, are, who are not happy that you are happy, who are happy when you are not happy. Praise the Lord. This woman had been banned for 18 years. They see the woman come to church, bend down every day, and they like it that way. Because they like to throw crumbs to the woman. Amen. Like to be Lord over our life. And Jesus come, Jesus broke the chain. Hallelujah. And the woman was set free. And he said, Jesus said, when the people were complaining in chapter 13, verse 16, he said, Then should not this daughter of Zion of Abraham, whom Satan has bound for 18 long years, be released from our bondage on the Sabbath day? I see deliverance this morning for somebody in the name of Jesus. Therefore, this morning we cut off every power. And is contending with your deliverance. Every power contending with your freedom. We call them out this morning. In the precious name of Jesus. So that's the first thing we need to say about that, about that man. That the man was under demonic enslavement. Hallelujah. And don't forget the Bible says for this purpose. So the God has manifest. That he might destroy the work of the devil. The work of the devil in your life will be destroyed this morning. All you just need to do is believe. Secondly. The Bible said in Luke, in the Luke account, in Luke chapter 8, verse 27, or Mark chapter 5, verse 15, the, woman, the man was what was naked. 
Praise the Lord. The man was completely naked. And he was oblivious to the fact that he was naked. And naked, when you see, when you have a dream of nakedness, it shows that shame and reproach is coming. You need to pray. Hallelujah. When you, when you have a dream that you are naked, it, it, well, it, it indicates shame and reproach. So this woman, sorry, this man, I don't know why I'm talking about a woman. This man here, yeah, praise the Lord, was a reproach, not only to himself, but to his own family. Amen. So they locked, they left him up. Hallelujah. Left him in the tombs because he was completely naked. Hallelujah. Nakedness is a symbol of shame. I pray this morning, everything that represents shame in your life will be broken. Yeah. The power of the enemy will be destroyed. Yeah. Your nakedness will not be exposed. Yeah. I prophesy over somebody that God will cover all for you. Yeah. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 4 says, Don't be afraid. Can we read it together? Isaiah 54 verse 4. I want, to, I want it on the board. Hallelujah. Let's read it together. It says, Have no fear. Oh, which one are you showing us now? Praise the Lord. Okay. KJV. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy wooden wood anymore. Say, I receive it. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll read my translation. It says, don't be afraid, for you will not be put to shame. Amen. Don't be intimidated, for you will not be humiliated. Amen. You will forget about the shame you experienced in your youth. Amen. You will no longer remember the disgrace of your abandonment. Amen. I pray that will be the portion of somebody this morning. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That you will forget the shame of yesterday. And God of heaven, it will make up for you. Amen. And Romans chapter 10, verse 11 and 12 says, it is just as the scripture says, everyone, it was everyone. Amen. Now, without exception, when the Bible says everyone, it means everyone. It says everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Can I say a believer in the house this morning? Amen. It says everyone who believes in him shall not be put to what? To shame. It may be quoted to shame. God will show up. Thank you, man. Amen. It may look as if it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. Amen. Amen. People may have concluded, but God will, God, God will show up on your behalf. Amen. And they will confirm them. Amen. It says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. Verse 12 says, for there's no difference between Jew and Greek. The law, the same Lord is Lord of all and is rich to all who call on him. He's the same God. He's the God of the mountain. He's the God of the valley. He's the God of the apostle. He's the God of the bishop. He's the God of someone who goes born again today. It does not matter. There's, there's no Greek. There's no Jew. God is rich towards all who calls upon him. Number three, the man was alone. Of course, nobody stays with him in the tomb. Praise the Lord. The man was abandoned. He, was lived, he lives in the tomb. You have families, but this man has none. Even if he has none, they have run away. Mm. Amen. You know, you know when, it, when, when you are making it, everybody is your family. <laughs> Amen. People will find a way of, of uh, linking themselves with you. Praise the Lord. You are their uncle, your father's mother. One, one way or the other, the genealogy will click. But, amen, but when you are nobody, you don't have any family. This man has no family. He's been completely abandoned. He lives alone. You have friends. Amen. If you have friends, you don't want to talk to. But this man has no friends. You know, sometimes we don't value friends. Praise the Lord. Because we have them. This man has nobody to greet him. People don't run away when they see you. But I bet everyone who sees the man coming, they will pick race. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Nobody, want to, nobody wants to stay near him. He was alone. Are you lonely? Is your life lonely? Are you lonely? Do you feel lonely? One of the first things I noticed in this country is that this country can be very lonely. Praise the Lord. England can be very lonely. 
And maybe your own loneliness is, is much more than the physical we're talking about. Maybe, no, you are lonely. You're just alone by yourself. Nobody to help you. Nobody to assist you. You can depend on God. Is the help of the helpless. Praise the Lord. Is the help of the helpless. And he will help you. I said the Lord will help you. You can count on his companionship. You can count on his help. Actually, the Holy Ghost is, is what we call it our paraclete. He's the one who is called alongside to help us. He goes with you everywhere you go. So you don't have to be alone. You don't have to feel lonely. Like I used to I teach my little girl. And she says, Dad, okay, you can't leave me alone. They are saying you are not alone in the house. The Holy Ghost is with you. Jesus is with you. God the Father is with you. So now have that conscious consciousness that you are not alone. Each time the enemy wants to make you feel lonely, tell you I'm not alone. God the Father, the Trinity, the what? They are with me. Hallelujah. So we found that this man had nobody, had no man. His companion were dead bones. His home was a sepulchre. No one ever went near him. Thank God you can sit in church. Nobody is throwing away. My pastor's wife will say, you are saying, people are not closing their nose. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Hallelujah. And I pray this morning that the Holy Ghost will companion with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Everywhere you feel lonely, God will make up for you. Amen. Number four. Of course, we said that the man was possessed by a demon. What is your name? My name, he said, this word is demon. It's what is legion. For we are many. And sometimes when we talk about demon, there could be and a lot of a lot of semantics. It could be demon possession. There could be demon, there could be demon oppression. People have said, well, as a child of God, you cannot be possessed. Well, we won't, we won't go to that theology now. Praise the Lord. But the fact is that people can be oppressed, they can be possessed. This man here was completely demonic, was completely possessed. His reason, his faculty, everything about him, praise the Lord, was controlled by what? By a demon. Hallelujah. So it does not matter whatever demonic oppression over your life. This morning, they shall be broken Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number five, the man was self-destructive. Those of you that work in mental space, you see that, I mean, you see that a lot. You call it self, thank you, they call it self-harm. Praise the Lord. Somebody goes over to uh, suspension bridge and he says, well, he wants to jump down. And you, think, and you want to give him sedatives. I don't know, so that this is not, I told you, I told you the, the experience we had, we went to Calenti one day to, I, I don't know what happened was there, I want to pray for somebody there. And uh, the demon said, familiar Jerry, spoke to me in my own native language. <laughs> yes. I, I, I thought I shared this here sometimes. Yes. The demon said, familiar Jerry, ah. So I knew this was beyond medication. But unfortunately, unfortunately, I can't do deliverance there. You can't do deliverance there. Praise the Lord. Think of people today who inflict injuries on themselves. Some with razor blade. But in case of this, case of this man with stone, amen, he will take stone and be piercing himself. Self-harm. And sometimes, you may not be piercing yourself, but you wish you are dead. You, know, you, know, you got to a place you just wish. Amen. Don't give up. Praise the Lord. Don't lose courage. Trust in the deliverance of the Lord. And God will arise from your help. Amen. Not tomorrow, but this morning. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, we also saw something about the man. We found out that the man had supernatural strength. Amen. The Bible said, no man could tame him. The chains will be broken. The fetters will be destroyed. And of course, we see that around us today. And we clap for them. Amen. We see them in our world today. We don't know that they are, they are, they are operations of demons. Somebody will pull a train, a 30 ton uh, vehicle with his teeth. How many of you have seen it? No, you see, and you, oh, you clap. You say, oh, he's, he's the strongest man in the world. That's demonic deception. Demonic deception. These are operations of, de of, of demons. Praise the Lord. You see somebody who is lying down 
and then you see a 30 ton lorry on him and he's pushing it up. You must understand there's something wrong somewhere. This is beyond the ordinary. So, <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know what? You don't have to be demon possessed before you have strength. You don't have to take cocaine before you have strength. You know why the secret of strength is in the Lord. The Bible says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, every time you are weak, just do something that pleases God. Look for a way to please the heart of God to receive strength and grace from him. Amen. You don't have to, you don't have to take something. You don't have to feel high. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 says, and Nehemiah continued, go and celebrate with a feast of rich food. You know, you know, you know one of the ways to silence the enemy is that when it, when it makes you feel sorry, rejoice. Praise the Lord. When it, when it tells you, you your life is worthless, say, I want to have a party. I want to celebrate because my life is not worthless. Praise the Lord. Now, this where they, these people here in, the, in Nehemiah, here, they, 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 they heard about the fierceness of God's anger and the people were jittery, were afraid. And Nehemiah said to them, go and celebrate with a feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before the Lord. Don't be dejected and sad. Tell your neighbor, don't be dejected. Don't be sad. Because God God is by your side. Because the Lord is for you. Now it does, listen to me, this is one of the ways to deal with the devil. When the devil wants to buy your head down, lift up your head. I say, I'm rejoicing. My name has been written. I am rejoicing. Now, you just begin to sing. Just look for a song and bless the name of the Lord. Make him mad. Praise the Lord. Make him mad. Don't allow him to negatively influence you. He says, don't be dejected and sad. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And finally, apart from the fact that the man was alone, he was abandoned by friends, by enemies. Even his enemies, they abandoned him. Praise the Lord. His friends and foes and family, they left him, they left him to his, to his they've, 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 I mean, they just felt that the man was no longer redeemable. Do you feel, do you feel like, like somebody's given up on you? How you feel the world is given up on you? How you think, how you think you're not redeemable? It's a lie of the enemy. Job said to him that is joined to the living, there is hope. It's only the man that is beyond there, the man there, that has no hope. As long as you are on planet Earth, things can change. And things will change in your favor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But Genesis 28 verse 15. It says, behold, I am with you. And I will keep you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. Look at somebody and say, the Lord says, Lord says I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Look, you look for somebody and say, say thus say the Lord, I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Look for a third person say, thus says the Lord, I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Can I hear a resounding amen? Amen. Lord said, I won't leave you. And of course, you know, the Bible says that God is not a man that he will lie. As he said, we not do. He says, my word which I have spoken shall not come back to me void. He shall do what? He shall come, accomplish the purpose for which I have sent him. Just take God's word at face value. Just accept it. Receive it as God's very word to you. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now quickly, we look at some things. I want us to, I want us, I want us to, to notice some things about the operations of the demons here. Amen. It's going to help us in our own private life. Amen. Because one of the ways by which we handle demons, we handle the enemy, is that we, that we learn to understand how they operate. Amen. I was counseling with somebody, me, uh, it was last week, and I said, sometimes you don't know the name of a demon. Amen. But you can still deal with them. 
by their method of operations. You don't have to know their names. In fact, sometimes you ask them and they'll tell you lies. Don't forget their father is the father of lies. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when you ask for the demons, the demons are likely going to tell you his real name. It's not going to deceive you. Amen. So you deal with them by, by what? By their mode of pressure. No, they call it see, mode operandi. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now let's look at some of the things we can glimpse from, from these demons. Number one. Man, please note this very, very careful. The fact, because of our time, I won't, I won't, I won't be able to go through, but I can just pick, pick at some of them. Is that the demons believe in the incarnation of God in Jesus. Amen. Elementary theology that we still argue with today. Now your Muslim friends will tell you, God has no wife. I say he has no what? He has no children. So Jesus cannot be the son of God. Amen. Even demons acknowledge the fact that Jesus is God. Hallelujah. They acknowledge that. Then number two, they believed in the deity of Jesus. Not only did they acknowledge it, they believed and they worshipped him. Praise the Lord. The demon came and did what? And they lied and they burned and they worshipped God and they worshipped Jesus. Number three, this is very crucial for you. Demons do not know the details of the future. Amen. Let's look at it. I just, let me just read this so I can understand. I want to see. He said, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. And cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? Who told him Jesus son of the most high God? He knew. Praise the Lord. I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he has said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Hallelujah. So number three, demons, do, they don't know the future. They don't have the details of the future. One thing you must understand is this. The devil gives suggestions. He leads you to make mistakes. Praise the Lord. He, he, he puts thoughts in your mind. Amen. And he allows you to walk on the thoughts. He suggests thoughts. And when you pick on those thoughts, those lying thoughts of the enemy, and then you, you walk on them. Then you are entrapped by the devil. Hallelujah. Now they thought that Jesus had come to send them to what? To the bottomless pit. Before time. Number four. Demons also believed in biblical prophecy. Because they knew their hand. He said, had thou come to send us what? To hell. Hallelujah. Number five. The demonic world is terrified of their coming. The demons are terrified of their coming torment in hell. However, men joke with hell while demons are freed. We joke with hell. Somebody say, ah, oh, no. Like the study we are, the study we are having there. Say, God is a loving God. He cannot throw you into hell. I'm sorry. You don't know God. Paul said, because we know the terror of God, we persuade men. You don't know God. Even demons here who had been destined to go to hell, they are still begging. Say, but Jesus is not yet time. They knew that they knew that was where their hand is going to be. They are terrified. They are afraid. Now this cook and bull story will tell you, ah, if when you meet the devil in hell, he's going to punish you. The devil doesn't have time for you, hell. He doesn't have time for anybody. He has his own and no punishment. His demon, they have a, they had enough problem to deal with for themselves. Amen. The devil has no power in hell. What happens in the hell is orchestrated by God. It's been planned, it's been signed, it's been, it's been delivered by God. Hallelujah. So men joke with hell. Demons are afraid of hell. Praise the Lord. Beloved, hell is real. Tell you anybody, hell is real. Do everything to, to make heaven. Hallelujah. And of course, one, one strange thing I discovered is that even the demons, they prayed. They prayed. He said, Jesus, please do not send us away because this is our familiar territory. Amen. You know, some demons operate in people's lives so much so that they become what people call familiar spirit. For some that you don't even know the difference between them. Because they have been so used to... Now, these demons have been so used to this man. 
They'll be so used to the environment. And said, Jesus, if you send us away out of this man, do not send us away from this environment. Please, can you just send us to these pigs? He's still within the environment. And he answered their prayer. Now, if Jesus will answer the prayer of demons, would he answer your prayer? Now, just think of it. Just think of it. If he answered their prayer, okay, all right, you want to go to the head of swine, you go in. Now, what about you? That he redeemed with his precious blood. Hallelujah. And of course, the best part of it is that demons are powerless before the person of Jesus. That's the bit I love about it. Amen. Because simply said to him, come out of him. You are clean spirit. And all hell was let loose. So it does not matter the level of demonic oppression. It does not matter the demon behind the oppression. It does not matter what is happening in your life. No demon. Remember said the name of Jesus? Every name was bad. Both are things in heaven, things on earth, and under the day. And the good thing is this. It's not for Jesus alone. Praise God. Every one of us can handle such situations. Hallelujah. You can deal with demonic oppressions. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be a deacon or a deaconess. Praise the Lord. All you simply do is, in the name of Jesus, come out of him. Period. Hallelujah. Somebody, some of you are looking at me strangely. Yes. It's past, I, keep, I keep telling people that nobody taught me deliverance. Nobody taught me how to pray for the sick. I see people do it and we just go ahead to do it. That's how we were brought up as believers. We had the opportunities. Praise the Lord. The first man I invited the man of God to come and preach in my local church. And then uh, I said, please, sir, come, and, come and conduct deliverance. I like deliverance a lot in those days. So I said, please, come on. We call it Holy Ghost service. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And he came around. And then I was amazed as soon as the man began to preach. All kind of things were beginning to happen. And then he said, is that called, bro? Come on, Jeremy. I said, I know. <laughs> Maybe I can't join you in this one. He said, come on. Do something. And I was, I discovered that as soon as I speak to demons, demons also come on. Oh, so I was emboldened. It's just because you have not tried it. Praise the Lord. Every one of us has been given power. Amen. To heal the sick. To cast out demons. Say in the name of Jesus. I believe. I have been given power and authority. To heal the sick. And to cast out demons. Now you can do it. Let's start some round. How many of us have heard of Let's start some round? Let's start some round. Okay. A mighty man of God was in the Philistines, in the, in the Phili, um, Philippines. Amen. And then he saw on radio, on television, he saw on television that there was a woman who was a mad, was a mad woman and then very fierce. And then the Lugo said, go and deliver her. Go and deliver her. And he said, I've not done it before. Nico said, what have you read in your Bible? Just simply go. And so he got there, told, he went to the prison and he told the chief warden, I want, and the woman, they, they gave him a, a debt um, to sign. They gave, they been told, now, now nobody's allowed to go to that cell. Nobody's allowed to go there. But if you want to go, you have to sign, uh, what's it called? Like the one they do in the hospital. Uh, so, Consent form. You have to give that. You are the one that said you want to go and pray for this man. That was his first time. After maybe 20, 25 years of experience as a minister, as a missionary. And then he just simply went there. Simple word. In the name of Jesus. And the demon staggered. Come out. And that was, all, that was what made Lester Sorrell. Just one instance of deliverance. And all over the Philistines, all over the world, nobody taught him was taught by God. Hallelujah. Be emboldened to take a step of faith rather than just looking for pastor, looking for people. Amen. Who will run your life for you? I got a note from my friend yesterday and he said, he said, all of us are children of God. God has no grandchildren. I said, yes, I know that. God has no what? Has no grandchildren. We all have equal access to God. Hallelujah. Demons are powerless before the person of Jesus Christ. 
and before anyone who carries Jesus. Praise the Lord. You know, the, 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 the disciples, Jesus sent them out two by two. And they came out and they said, Lord, even the demons were subject to us in your name. They were excited. They never knew they could do it. They went out and they cast out demons. They healed the sick. They raised the dead. We are also called to do the same thing. Praise the Lord. So, for example, when we're in church and anybody is sick, you don't have to, they don't have to see the pastor. I told you, I told you, um, what's her name? Um, Rihanna, the other day I had a pain. I think with my back pain. And then, oh, well, she said, Pastor, can I pray for you? I said, yes, this, this is the kind of person I like. Pray for me. Praise the Lord. Pastor, can I pray for you? Yes. And I've told you that, um, around the clock said, until you pray for 200 people and don't get healed, you don't stop praying. So you keep praying and keep praying and keep praying and keep praying and one day you have a breakthrough. Amen. Because one of the things that, one of, the, one of, one of our fears is that, well, if I pray for him and the person doesn't get well, it's none of your business. Hallelujah. But you see, most times, if you are in tune with the Holy Spirit and you are led, there's going to be a result. Amen. Yeah, you can go out of your way to do it. But when you are led, you are going. And you see somebody, you say, and you go say, well, can I pray for that person now? Then, the power of God is present to do the work there. Go ahead and do it. Don't let the opportunity slip you by. Hallelujah. Amen. Mark chapter 5 verse 15. Before we close and pray this morning. Mark 5 15. And they came to Jesus and see him. Now, the Bible says, and did they say they saw him? Praise the Lord. And they see him. Praise the Lord. And they see him that was possessed with the devil. And at the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid. Now the word afraid that means they were, they, they were surprised. They were choked beyond uh, uh, yeah they were just what? What's happening? Could this be real? Hallelujah. The man was sitting down. Don't forget, the man was walking up and down in the mountains in the tombs. He was restless because he had a demon in his life. But now the power of the enemy has been broken. I prophesy over somebody this morning. Everything that I make your life restless, their power is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. You don't need to run from pillar to post. No. You don't belong to the devil. The minister of the devil is walking to and fro. Once again, everything that has made your life restless, their power is broken this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And the man was clothed. Don't forget, the man was initially, what? Naked. He was cut himself with stone. Hallelujah. But he was clothed. The glory of God will cover you. Amen. I said the glory of God will cover you. Now, 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 listen. This man had been previously exposed. It doesn't matter whether you have been previously exposed, whether damage has been done to your person or to your destiny. The glory of God will make up for you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everywhere people have run down your life, your life has been damaged. God's glory will overshadow you. Amen. God's glory will cover you. Amen. And it will make up for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And finally, the man was in his right mind. He was no longer under the control of the enemy. He could make his own decision. Praise the Lord. He was in his right mind. No man should return. Restoration came upon the man. I speak to somebody this morning. Now after this morning service, the power of God will reach you. Yeah. You will be restored. Yeah. Your life will be returned back to normal. Yeah. Everything that's been out of order will come back into order. Yeah. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. No man should return to the man. And people couldn't believe it. What a great change. There was a great transformation from a madman to somebody who is now in his or her right senses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the evidences we read in the scripture is that Jesus had power over the forces of darkness. Praise the Lord. So it does not matter what force of darkness is operating in our life. It does not matter what, what, is, what circumstance we find ourselves we can be rest assured that it's not beyond the power of God. Praise the Lord. That it's not beyond the power of God to deal with. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 1 verse 22-28, we see Jesus cast out a demon in the synagogue. In Mark 
in verse 23. I like the book of Mark. Now, let me, let me just encourage you. If you're somebody who is interested in the healing and deliverance ministry, read the book of Mark often. It's one of the best books on healing and deliverance. Praise the Lord in the Bible. The, the testaments, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are good, but Mark, Mark is loaded. Just read it. Read it a week. You can finish Mark in a week. If I can even finish in the day, just 16, 16 chapters. Hallelujah. <coughs> so we see in Mark 32, 34, Jesus casting out many demons. In Mark 1, 39, Jesus was casting out demons. In Mark 3, 11, unclean spirits will cry out, you are the son of God. But in Mark chapter 3, verse 14 to 15, the people were given authority to cast out demons. Say, I have been given authority to cast out demons. You can lose self-deliverance for yourself. I just ask you, spirit, you spirit of life, I bend you out of my life. You spirit of lust, I bend you out of my life. You self-deliverance for yourself. Praise the Lord. And if you see anybody who is oppressed also, you can step in into the shoes of Jesus and do the same. And the Lord will back you up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Finally, as we pray this morning, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Says, The one who practices sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, that he might destroy the work of the devil. Sickness and disease is the work of the devil. Hallelujah. So we're going to be praying for people who are sick this morning. Amen. But I long for the day where, where I don't have to do it alone. Praise God. I long for the day where I don't have to do it. People don't have to come to me. People can just look up, come to you. Take the challenge. Be a healer in the house. Tell your neighbor, take the challenge. Take up the challenge. Be a healer in the house. All it takes is faith. All it takes is faith. Praise the Lord. Um, you see, things happen when we pray. Uh, okay, once I started not in church. Two weeks ago, she came to see me in the office and uh, oh, I was your husband, blah, blah. Oh, you said my husband is sick. I don't know. Something is wrong with her. Okay, we just talked. As she was going, I just felt, okay, let me just, let me just send a word. Let us pray for him. And we just prayed. And then, uh, well, I don't have time, I read my text. Amen. And then, three o'clock, I got a text. He called. Pastor, hey, I don't understand this thing. I said, what happened? This is what happened. And the woman asked her husband. The man had pain and then she couldn't go anywhere. I was just praying in the office. I, just, just, I said, the Bible said, I sent forth his word and he healed them and he delivered her to their destruction. So I said, Father, we sent for the word of healing. And about around 12 30. So when she got home, she didn't meet the husband. He's gone out. She couldn't be, what happened? And he said, Called, her, called him and said, where, what's happening? Where you be? And he said, at about 12.30, I just felt life coming to me. You don't have to be there. That's the power of prayer. Just feel like coming to me. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. That every one of us can do what? Can be a healer. We can stand in the place of Christ. Amen. And heal the sick. Hallelujah. And it shall be well with us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I won't have time because I won't have time because it's already one o'clock. We should be closing about now. Amen. What I'm going to say is that one of the reasons I believe that the healing is for everybody is because it's a part of the covenant package. Hallelujah. He bore your sickness, he bore your disease in his body on the cross. By his stripe, you are here. All we do is simply enforce it. And we say, in the name of Jesus, let the work of Calvary be manifest in this body. Body be healed. Now, there are many methods of, of, of praying for the sick. You could use a command. Praise the Lord. Especially when you are dealing with demonic oppression. In the name of Jesus, house. Praise the Lord. You could speak to the part of the body. Body be healed. You could receive health from God. You could receive life from God. Hallelujah. So this morning, I don't know if you are sick in your body. Much of doing. want to pray. Hallelujah. And then we'll just do the anointing for, every, for everybody this morning. If you are sick in your body this morning and you want me to pray with you, can you please join me here in the front? Choir, please. Can you just give us a song? Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. 
omnipotent father. You know, you know it. Hallelujah. We just Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit.